Hi, natural stone looks amazingly beautiful in a garden, but real stone garden items can be very expensive and also sometimes it's quite hard to find the size or the shape you need. But what you can buy, you can DIY. If you're new here, my name is Irene and today I'll show you how I made faux stone garden planters. So what can we use to imitate stone, what to make it from? The first thing that comes to mind is concrete. It's cheap, easy to work with, and you can make planters of any size and shape you want. But actually, concrete doesn't do the work completely. You can still say it's concrete and not stone. I searched online and once upon a time I stumbled on a material called Hypertufa. It is made of cement, peat and vermiculite and it actually looks like a real stone. So this was the material I decided to use for making my planters. To make a planter, first you will need a container for mixing the solution, a measuring cup and a mold. I have a big plastic container here bought at Home Depot. By the way, this one is also a good base for making a planter in the future. A 7 liter bucket will be a measuring cup and the molds will vary. I'll tell you more about them later. The first step is making the solution, of course. I've mined a huge number of sources in search of the best recipe of Hypertufa and I ended up with the recipe that looked the best to me. 2 parts Portland cement, 1 part peat and 1 part vermiculite or perlite. I want to warn you right away, the work is going to be extremely messy, be sure to wear durable waterproof gloves to protect your hands, cement is very aggressive to the skin. I'm pouring 2 buckets of Portland cement into the mixing container. Then I'm pouring out a bucket of peat, I've bought mine in a garden center. And the third component is a vermiculite. It is also sold as a soil additive, but in small packages it comes out quite expensive. I found a large bag and it's way cheaper. You can use perlite, it's more cost effective, but it's white and you'll be able to see white particles in the finished product, so I decided that vermiculite would work better here. And one more addition to the recipe from me personally is fibers for concrete. This is a reinforcing additive for concrete. In my case I'm not going to use a reinforcing wire as it's not so easy to make a wire structure for a round planter. For the volume of mixture I made, this was about 30 liters, I added a generous handful of fibers. Next, I'm mixing all the dry ingredients. The final mixture should turn out to be quite homogeneous and the fibers should be rubbed and fluffed thoroughly so that they are distributed throughout the mixture evenly. This mixture requires much less water than concrete and if you don't mix it when dry, you won't be able to make it homogeneous later. Finally, I'll add some water. You want to do this by eye gradually till the mixture has the consistency of modeling clay. It took me a measuring bucket and another quarter for the volume I had. This is a little more than one part. But here you want to look at the consistency. You want to end up with a mixture that is easy to knead and holds its shape well. Now I'll pour the mixture into the mold. The first option I used was round balls. I came across super cheap plastic balls in a range of sizes and I'll be able to use them many times, so I bought some. Before laying out the mixture, you want to smear the plastic with something oily in order to remove the finished plant later easily. I used mineral oil here. You will need two bowls for making a planter, one larger and another one smaller. It's important to have the size difference so that the sides come out at least two inches thick or even thicker. I'm smearing the larger bowl with oil on the inside and the smaller one on the outside. 
I'm adding some mixture into the larger bowl. By the way, you can get by with just one bowl here, applying the mixture onto the sides in a thick layer and leaving it like this. Those you'll get the less neat insides, but if you're going to use it as a planter and will fill it with soil, that doesn't matter much actually. After the mixture is applied, it's better to put a piece of foam in the middle of the bottom for a drainage hole. I'm installing the smaller bowl inside and continue filling the sides with the mixture. Here I want to warn you, the mixture will expand a little while it cures, so do not fill it right to the top. I overdid it and the mixture was a little over the edge after curing, so I had a hard time trying to pick it out. In order for the smaller bowl to stay where it is and not to stick out, I'm adding a few stones inside. I'm trimming everything and wrapping it well in a plastic bag to keep the moisture inside. This helps the process of curing go better. I made two vessels like this and then I had a little mixture left, so I decided to try to make a pot belly planter. I used a rubber ball, you probably saw those, they have like handles on them. I cut off the top and added all the leftover mixture inside. It didn't turn out as much as I thought, and then I made a huge mistake. I decided to put a metal bucket inside, which I had wrapped in a garbage bag. I thought that it would make it easier to take it out later. How wrong I was, but more on that later. I'm gathering the edges of the former ball at the top, you'll get something like a rounded bag, and tying it tightly. Finally, the third option, the most budget-friendly one, I'll use two cardboard boxes. Here again, be sure to pick the sizes to have a really thick planter sides. I've applied some masking tape to the corners of the larger box from the inside to make them kind of rounded on the finished planter. I'm making a second batch of the mixture and applying it into the box. The sides and the bottom will be very thick here, about 4 inches thick, and the planter itself is going to be quite shallow. I'm also placing stones for weight in the smaller box and packing it in a plastic bag. After that, you want to leave the planters in a shady place for a day for the initial curing. After waiting for a day, I've pulled out the planters back to the light of day, and now the fun part begins. To reveal the hyper tufa texture, you'll need a coarse metal brush. The brush knocks out those areas where there's a peat and you get a nice porous surface. I tried to work with a steel wool scrubber sponge, but it was a brush that revealed the texture best. I also tried to use a wire brush bead for a drill, but when you use a drill you are taking off too much, since the material hasn't yet gained enough strength. So I took my time and worked with a hand wire brush. As I have already said, on the bowl planters the solution expanded slightly and the upper side of the bowl plunged into it. I had to scrape this part with a knife. Well, now it's time to talk about the second jump with a pot belly planter. I said that I put a metal bucket inside and wrapped it in a bag, hoping to take it out without any problems, but I didn't take into account that the bucket has a couple of stiffening ribs, thin convex strips, they are almost invisible, but that was enough. In the process of curing, the solution expanded and the bucket got stuck inside tightly. We tried to get it out with my husband for a really long time with no success. After all, we decided to break the bucket. My hub used a hammer and pliers to do this. So, do not repeat my mistakes, you only need to put something completely smooth inside and without any bulges on the sides, even if these bulges are very small. 
By the way, the planter turned out to look like a pumpkin, take note, for autumn decor. But I didn't want this kind of a planter, I wanted to get something similar to a stone, so I leveled all the faults with a brush and a drill. The square planter was really easy to take out, the cardboard was a little soaked from the solution and I removed it very easily. I processed the entire surface with a brush, then Gary used a drill with a wire brush bit for processing the corners and the edges to round them a bit, and after that I scratched it manually a little more. After the planters have acquired their final shape, you want to swaddle them in plastic bags again, I used a large garbage bags here, send them to a shady location and forget about them for a couple of weeks. During this time the reaction in the mixture will be completed and the hypertufa will fully cure. After this you want to take out the planters and here they are in all their glory. But it's too early to plant anything here. Cement has an alkaline reaction, it's very harmful for plants, so it must first be neutralized. You want to rinse the planters with plenty of water, at the same time you'll remove the dust after brushing. To speed up the process you can add some vinegar to the water and let it sit for an hour. I'm waiting until the planters dry well and picking out the foam from the drainage holes. Now I'll fill them with plants. These planters are great for alpine plants, like sedums, saxifrages, creeping phloxes and so on. And if you put the planters in a shady space, miniature hostas will feel good here. The surface looks really natural and I like the texture, it really resembles natural stone. Once the planters get withered a little, I hope moss will start growing on them for that super natural look. Well, I hope you liked uh, my hypertufa planters. Please let me know what you think of them down below. Actually, they withstood winter very well, which I'm quite happy about because we have frosty winters here in Russia where I live and I got many comments that this kind of material will not stand winters well and would break. but. After this winter they are totally fine and I'm going to make more of them, so if you're interested, stay tuned. Thanks for watching this video and hope to see you in my next one. Bye!